an edge rusher out of Michigan, New Jersey guy, Rashawn Gary, who I know from talking to Chris, very high on. Yes. Not just because he's a New Jersey kid, right. but that's part of it. Yeah. That's uh, part, I mean, that always bumps him up a little bit in your eyes. I right? know he's got a little Jersey toughness to him. So you, we're and, not that far off. I probably love him more. But well, you, after the combine, you were saying he's, you know, maybe, maybe top five with all that talent. Yeah. Um, then yesterday, you put him as number two edge rusher. Yeah. So, so Josh has him as his number 16 overall. So really not low on him. Right. But still, right. Uh, 16 overall. But here's some direct quotes from Josh's story Uh-oh. on Roto World. Where is the pass rush plan? Where is the bend? When is he attacking the edges? When does he use his length? A lot of questions for Rashawn Gary and Josh's mind. Sure. I like Rashawn Gary a lot, Mm -hmm. but I want Rashawn Gary to end up in like a Mike Zimmer type coach defense because I think you brought up this name. Danelle Hunter to me is why I value athleticism so much at the edge and along the interior because if you think about it in its simplest terms, right? It's one of the true one-on-one matchups on an NFL field. Yep. So if you have a significant advantage athletically as a leg up, that's a great starting sure, point. Right. And Rashawn Gary has, you know, a fastball right now if we're talking about yeah. baseball in that he has this one pitch that can be successful and be productive in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, just a speed rush to the outside, hopefully going against a heavy foot offensive tackle. And again, you can press the pocket. You can move the quarterback off his spot. To me, though, there's no counter move. There's, and consistently, I should say, there are flashes of just about everything sure. with Sean Gary. Nothing consistent. Whereas, you know, he might set up this outside move earlier in the game and then later on <clears throat> hit an inside move later on in the draft. Or once he gets pocket depth, you know, put his foot in the dirt and get, then take a straight line to the quarterback. Right. Just none of that is there. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of thought to his game right now. And that's why, to me, the other guys, the other edge rushers show that a lot more. But again, I do think Rashawn Gary's a first round. Yeah, no, player. obviously. I mean, you had him as what, your 15th overall, yes, 18th 16, overall? 16, 16 right yeah. Right so yeah. I, I get it. I understand some of the things he's saying are very valid. I just go off my experience and go like some of the things, again, that he says, I almost like. He, he, he'll get taught these things at the NFL level. So. He's just doing it with raw ability at this point right now. He's been right able now. to be very successful without right. his Right, and he's a different and edge guy things. than Nick Bosa or Josh Allen to me. I think the, the beauty of Rashawn Gary, Gary uh, is the – the position versatility as far as, like I, I mentioned, he was a lot like Michael Bennett, okay. where he's going to be a – he could be a strong side DN and take the double team of the tackle and the tight end and split them and cause disruption. But at the same time, if you needed to put him on three at three technique versus yeah. a passing team and have a mismatch against a guard in passing situations, I, mean, I think he could be a handful there. And that's where I value him a lot as well. Do you think he can win inside as a pass rusher? Like, do you think he can do the Trey Flowers outside I and totally then go do. against, you know, I, your – Less athletic into your offensive I totally line. do. Yeah, that's 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 really where I love him. I think he could be like that Trey Flowers, Michael Bennett type guy where, yeah, it might not be 12 sacks, 14 sacks a year. It's probably going to be six and a half, seven sacks, but a whole lot of what I like to say – the play up stats which is not an official thing Mm -hmm. but he ruins the design of plays a lot and yeah he doesn't get the tackle or anything on the stat line but I look at it and go well the first guy that messed this play up was Rashawn Gary and then somebody else got the sack or the tackle in the run game and as a closing thought the reason why so many people I think really value this defensive line edge class is because there are so few players at the NFL level now that you can line up and say hey there's a potential that you can win this one-on-one matchup. Like, really, the pillars to winning football are pass protecting with five, pass rushing with four, yep. winning the turnover differential, and creating big plays. That's that's pretty strong there. You're right. And so creating that disruption with four is super difficult. We just saw the team that won the Super Bowl not have a single player, basically, yeah. that, hey, we can line you up and win. Trey Flowers got paid a lot of yeah. money, but that's not I even him. I think he got overpaid, too. I'll exactly. say that. So, right. so, but all these guys, you're – Ed Oliver's, your Nick Bosa's, your Josh Allen's, your Rashawn Gary's, your Montez Sweat's, your Brian Burns, they all offer that potential to win that individual matchup in each and every play, so that's why they're being projected so early. And to your point about the front four, which I think you're spot on there, I mean, yes, they won the Super Bowl, but the other team that was not that lost the Super Bowl, they did it with the front four. Exactly. The Eagles did it with the front four. The Atlanta Falcons did it with the front four. The Seattle Seahawks did it with the front four. The Denver Broncos did it with the front four. The Carolina Panthers, who were yeah. also in that Super Bowl, yeah. the front four. <laughs> None of them had to blitz because their front four right. could apply the pressure and you can keep seven back in coverage and confuse the quarterback that way. And, and what that means is for your coaches – it's being more multiple. You'll hear that word a lot this offseason, yes. being more multiple. 
that then just puts the pressure entirely on the coaches because right. they have to scheme it. And luckily for the Patriots, they had Calvin Noy, they had Dante Hightower, who back going to their college games rushed the passer quite a bit. No doubt about it. You're and right. So they had that experience, right. but not everyone is as Chris knows as well coached as the Patriots. I mean, yeah. it makes a whole lot of sense. It was like playing uh, Super Tech Mobile back in the day and going against Lawrence Taylor, right? I mean, yeah. you couldn't if you couldn't stop Lawrence. You couldn't even run like an off tackle die. No you do way. Any of that stuff. You're gonna you throw to... the guy out of the way and tackle the guy so in two seconds. It limited your playbook to like three plays <laughs> out of the eight. There was only six you could yeah, pick right. from, anyways. Right. It was yeah. all, that makes that makes a whole lot of sense. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.